the next song we're singing is called Can I Get a Witness? Yeah. And uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a bit on the chorus where we say, um, stand up and testify. And if you're able to, please stand up and you shout amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness? crazy Christian people. Well, look, I told you, thank Wednesday, I don't want no rock testifying for me. God uh, gave me lips. You can go ahead and hold your peace if you want. Yeah. Last I read, the trees of the field are clapping their hands. You don't have to. I'm going to whether you want to or not. <laughs> Listen, now we got, a, we got something worth being excited about. Amen. 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 Change lives. All this. My pastor always used to say, all this in heaven too. Yeah. Amen. Right. Brother, you ready? Come on, man. Let us have it. Let it Amen, brother. Amen. I do. I got my magic shoes on. Amen. <laughs> He's giving me a hard time about my shoes. Amen. Amen. I tell you, when you're this fat, you got to have something comfortable on your feet. So amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, I try to wait, girls. I do. When you sing that song, I try, brother man. I try to wait. I mean, I try, but they get to that part. Is, is there any believers? And I just, I can't help myself, brother Jim. I got, I mean, I know it's, I'm prematurely standing up, but I cannot help it. Amen. I mean, I, they, it just gets too good, praise God. Amen. And I got to help myself and uh, appreciate the Holy Ghost filled singing tonight. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what singing is. It's that it's that priming bubble on the chainsaw. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got to pump it up. Amen. And then you can go to cutting some wood. Hallelujah. And uh, appreciate good Holy Ghost singing. Amen. Amen. I sure don't want to bring a damper on the service tonight and bring your spirits down, but I want to find our text tonight in Luke chapter number sixteen. If you've got your Bibles, Luke chapter number sixteen. Some of y'all. Can't say amen tonight for some reason. 
or another. I'm, I believe, I'm just crazy enough to believe the night like the little boy in Sunday school. This Sunday school teacher was teaching about the Spirit of God and the Lord living inside of you. And He does. The Apostle Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians, he said, Christ in you. Right? right. He's in you tonight. Right. He said, glorify God in your body, which is the Lord's. Right. Amen. You're housing the Holy Ghost tonight if you're saved. Right. And I'm like that little boy in Sunday school. And he said, he raised his hand. She said, is there any questions? He raised his hand. She said, yeah, well, you got it. He said, well, if the Lord, the Spirit of God, if God's living inside of me, shouldn't He stick out somewhere? <laughs> Amen. I agree with that, don't you? Amen. I mean, He ought to stick out in a hand raise. He ought to stick out in a shout. Amen. Amen. He ought to stick out in some tears running down Amen. your face. Amen. There ought to be some evidence of the abiding of the Holy Ghost in your heart. And uh, I'm telling you tonight, friend, uh, the Lord, I believe, has orchestrated the service exactly how He wants it to be done tonight. Buckle up, and let's put in in verse number 19. The Bible says, there was a certain rich man. This is a lost man, okay? There's two men in the story, got one saved and one lost. And uh, may I tell you, when you're lost, your name does not matter. You're just a certain man. And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Amen. We may have some of them in here tonight. Purple's royalty. It's a, it's a sign of royalty. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which had laid at his gate full of sores. Y'all see that? And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. That's about the only friends he had. Amen. Right. It was them dogs. They came and licked his sores. But look what the Bible says, and it came to pass that the beggar died. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Don't let that Abraham's bosom throw you off tonight. Well, after the crucifixion of the Lord, he went by and got them. Right. Took them to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's where them saints were. And he went by and got them after Calvary and went and got them and took them to heaven. When he went and took that blood and he, and he put it on the mercy seat of heaven. Amen. And uh, it's the Bible says that, that after he went and got them, look what it says. And, uh, it says in verse number 23, and, and in hell, he lift up his eyes. Boy, I had a message tonight. I wish the Lord had let me preach. I preached a message entitled, Six Things the Rich Man Had in Hell Every Christian Needs. Amen. You say, that sounds crazy. He had some things that we need tonight. The Bible says he had his eyes lifted towards heaven. I believe you'd be a lot merry, more, more merry people tonight if you'd keep your eyes rapture ready. Amen. Looking towards the Lord. Amen. It said that he was in hell and he lifted up his eyes being in torment. See if Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. This ain't a joke tonight. You can smile your way to hell tonight. You can laugh your way to hell tonight. You can tithe your way to hell tonight. You can bab I don't care if I baptize you so many times you sizzle when you hit hell. Look up in here. That's where you're going, friend, if you ain't got the Lord in your heart. Right. Amen. Y'all okay? Yeah. I'm worried to death about Baptist churches. I don't care if it's independent Baptist. I don't care. Look up in here. I don't care if it's missionary Baptist. I, it don't matter. It don't make no difference to me. I'm worried about churches in general that will not say the word hell. Right. Right. Y'all all right? right? Look down your long judgmental nose at me tonight, ma'am. It don't make me no difference. I've got a message up from the line of God tonight about a real literal hell, amen. I mean, friend, what we need is hell preaching. It'll stir you, amen. It'll stir the saved and it'll convict the lost. I mean, dear friend, fix your eyes on me tonight. I want to preach to you about a real literal bull in western hell. Is that all right? Beneath our feet is a hell. That's real. 
We all won't shout about heaven. We all won't talk about heaven. Preachers won't preach about heaven. Everybody wants to talk about the streets of gold, but nobody wants to talk about the charred walls of the damned. Oh, friend, I'm going to tell you, but Seth said he got saved because the love of God crippled him. Oh, you're looking at a seven-year-old boy tonight. Oh, when I got saved when I was seven, oh, friend, I got saved because I was scared to death of hell. I didn't want to go. My uncle took my soul and dangled my seven-year-old soul out over hell, sir. I'm talking about scaring me up to death, amen. And it scared me. I'll thank God tonight for hell, fire, and brimstone preaching. Say, it's revival, I know. I know it's revival. And this is exactly, Brother says preaching is exactly the kind of preaching that brings revival. When you, friend, feel the smoke of hell on your feet, if I could tonight load all of us up my greyhound bus and drive you to hell, I'd do it, amen. And friend, I'd let you look out the window of mercy at what you might get in if you don't get saved tonight. Where your family's gonna go if you don't get born again, if they don't get born again. You okay? Is everybody all right? Don't get nervous. We're just getting started. Talking about hell, amen. H-E-L-L, not in a cussing matter, not in an out of context matter, but out straight of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible tonight. Hell. I don't expect much shouting. I don't expect much smiles. I'm going to tell you something, friend. The only reason you ought to smile about hell preachers is because you ain't going. Right. Right. Only time you ought to shout during hell preachers is because you're glad you ain't going. Right. I'm going to tell you tonight, friend, I can charge hell with a water pistol. Amen. I couldn't go if I wanted to. You hear me tonight? I couldn't go if I wanted to. You say, why? Because I've been sealed until the day of redemption. Amen. Been saved, but tonight I feel a where I feel a tugging from another world that there's somebody in here that's not. Right. 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 Amen. I tell them at home, if ain't your kid, don't play with them. Y'all all right? I tell them at home, if ain't your kid, don't play with them. Amen. If you can hold it, hold it. Don't go to the bathroom. Amen. Just look right here. I mean, the better you listen, the faster I'll preach. I'm talking about, friend, a burning hell is just as real as a blissful heaven. I mean, the torments of hell is just as real as the triumphal of golden streets and jasper walls. I mean, friend, I wish we could shout tonight about heaven, oh, but I'm burdened about somebody going to go to hell tonight. This is no joke. I tell them back home, this ain't Mario Kart. When you slip on a banana peel and you crash and burn and you reload, that ain't how life works. That's it, hoss. You die, that's it, ma'am. Look up in here. That is it. Six foot under. I mean, friend, when it's all said and done and they kick the dirt on my grave, I mean, friend, I can only be remembered for what you say about me and the mark I leave. Oh, but when that day comes, oh, friend, if I've accepted Jesus is all that matters, amen. I mean, friend, all of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. I mean, tonight are you saved? I mean, is it real? Is it real? Is it real? But Daniel Waters sings a song. Is it real? You better make sure it's real tonight. Y'all okay? Amen. Is it real? Preachers, they get so nervous when other preachers start preaching about hell. Why is that? Why is that? Why does it make us uncomfortable? Why does it make Christians save born again people scared when somebody busts the Bible open and starts talking about hell? Amen. Well, it ought not make us scared. Right. It ought to make us burdened. Right. Yes. It ought to make us shout. It ought to make us happy. But it ought to make us cry. I mean, man, we ought to be on a roller, mo- on a roller coaster of emotion when a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, whatever friend is preaching about hell. I'm going to tell you, I've sit under hell preaching my whole life. I cry a while. 
I'll shout a while. I'll smile a while. I'll get upset a while. Just depends on what God's putting on my heart during the message. I dare say tonight somebody is going to die and go to hell tonight without the Lord. Amen. Traveled over, seven, I think it was over 700 miles one way here. And bless the Lord, no accidents, no car wreck, but I've seen some. I've seen a bad one, boy, on the way here. You say, what happened? Could have been you. Could have been me. Let me, give you, let me give you four fast things about this horrible place. Can I? Y'all all right? Let me give you four fast things about this horrible place. See, what I'm concerned in back home, I don't know how it is here, but we've got that crowd of nodders and that crowd of ameners and that crowd that professes to be saved, but there's no fruit of their salvation. There's no action of salvation. They could care, I mean, missing church don't bother them. I'm talking about, friend, if you got saved like I got saved, Brother Jim, Brother Billy Kelly said the night he got saved, he said it's like he walked out in the stars on dress parade. I've listened to his testimony, I bet a billion times on YouTube. I'm telling you, he said it's like it's like the stars winked at him. He said the night he got saved, that he, he said he couldn't even look up because he's so dirty, rotten, black. I mean, man, tonight we need some old time. Walk by, get on your face, humility, old time, Holy Ghost, salvation tonight ought to happen amongst us. Amen. Let me tell you something about hell tonight. Are you all ready? Number one, let me give you this. The pains are unexplainable. The pains are unexplainable. Look in verse 23, the Bible says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and saith, Abraham, I'm a fall off. Oh, may I tell you tonight, friend, I cannot explain the pains of hell to a T, but I'm going to give it my best shot tonight. Amen. In Mark chapter 9, I believe about the 44th verse, the Bible says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Oh, may I tell you tonight, ma'am, a oh, friend, a oh, sir, red, yellow, black, or white, oh, that pain comes to all, a oh, big, skinny, tall. I'm telling you that pain tonight, it'll find everybody that dies and goes to that place. The pains are unexplainable. I'm talking about, friend, uh, I'll go home tonight. I don't care if you got a glass, uh, if you got a gas stove or an electric stove, a uh, light a burner up. Stick your hand over that thing. Count to ten. One Mississippi. Two South Carolina. Three South Carolina. That sounds longer than Mississippi. If you can get to ten seconds, I tell you, you probably something. Amen. Wouldn't you think, Brother Jim, I was preaching this at the first church of pastor. I'm telling you, dear old girl, oh, that come was that church. I mean, Sister Heather, I mean, man, she, they had a wonderful family, and me and my wife loved them very dear. I'm telling you, dear friend, I was preaching this message, and I said, go home to a congregation of about 60 probably. I said, go home. Hold your hand over the fire and come back and tell me how it is. I mean, friend, she didn't come back and tell me how it was. She come back and found an altar and told God how it was and got born again. I mean, friend, if one out of 60 will get it, I'm going to tell you tonight of the pains of that place. Unexplainable. We was burning. My boss bought a bunch of property up the road from our cabinet shop about 10 or 12 acres or so, he's fixed to build a new shop. Had a bunch of old trailers, storage buildings we was burning, trying to clear the place up. You see, rednecks in Arkansas, we, if it burns, we burn it. And then we bury it, we dig a hole and bury it. Y'all all right? When that coated wire falls off, we, we keep the good stuff. Amen. Yeah, that'll hit you about noon tomorrow, what I'm talking about there. Amen. I'm talking about we had a fire going, Brother Jim. I'm talking about big as this ceiling. I mean a bonfire, buddy. Amen. I'm talking about a big one. It's burning so hot. There's blue flames coming out of that thing, Brother Manny. And all them boys standing around there. I couldn't help myself. I said, hey. 
I said, if you ain't saved, I said, this is what you got to look forward to. I mean, it's so hard. You grab a board and you turn your head and hope to God that you made it in. I mean, friend, tonight, uh, well, why don't you get saved while the window of grace is open? Because uh, it's coming today. Oh, that God's going to shut the thing and you won't be able to get saved. I'll get saved in the I'll get saved in the tribulation. No, you won't. My hind leg, you'll get saved in the tribulation. You say, how? Because when that baby looks at you and says, Mama, I'm starving. I'm about to die of starvation. And you've got to have the mark of the beast or the buy or sell for the minute. I mean, friend, you're going to look at your dying baby and you're going to take that thing. I'm telling you, you will. You better get saved in the hour of grace. Y'all okay? But I'll make it. Let me tell you something. Did you know that in the tribulation time, friend, I ain't trying to get into deep things, but I'm telling you, it's in the will of God tonight. Brother, I say these things, that you're going to have to keep commandments. I mean, it ain't going to be no grace. Oh, Lord, come in my heart and save me. I mean, friend, it's going to be hard to get saved in that day. Y'all okay? Get saved tonight. Don't even worry about it. It's like, it's like if you go to Walmart. I mean, Walmarts are everywhere. Y'all got one here, I saw it. They're everywhere. I remember, I don't know if they still do it here, they don't do it much back home, they used to do free samples. Walmart. I don't even like yogurt. I'm not a yogurt eater, I don't like yogurt. But I ate yogurt when it was free. Say amen. <laughs> I'd go by, get a cup of yogurt, didn't even like it. And I'd say, you know, you're only allowed one. So I'd send my cousin, I'd say, hey, go, 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 let's go get another one. You're going to have to get this one. Amen. You get test- Let me tell you tonight, friend, you may not like me, and you may not like Brother Seth, and you, not might, you might not like the shouting, and you might not like it loud, uh, but may I tell you, dear friend, uh, Brother Jim, it's loud either way you go. Uh, if you die and go to hell, it's loud. Uh, if you die and go to heaven, it's loud. Uh, may I say, friend, but I'd rather be on the north side of loud. Uh, it's glory, and it's singing. I don't want to go to the wailing and the gnashing of teeth tonight. I want to be with the Lord, but friend, you will not. You don't get saved. The pains are unexplainable. Well, I'm going to tell you, that, that scares me enough. just makes me want to get saved again. Amen. Yeah, I'm talking about, friend, pains like you've never felt. It's unexplainable. But let, let me give you this. Not only are the pains unexplainable, But look at verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Let me tell you what the rich man had in hell every Christian needs tonight, a realization of mercy. Realize what it is, what it will get you out of. Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus. Oh, now you want something to do with the preacher. Now you want something to do with the gospel. Now you want something to do with the man. Uh, Now you want something to do with Jesus. Uh, But it's too late now, sir. Friend, Lazarus is separated from you due to a great gulf between heaven and hell. He said that he may dip his tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. If I asked you tonight, would you rather have the bottle or would you rather have me dip my finger and put it on your tongue tonight? You're going to choose the bottle. I'm telling you, but a desperate man will take what he can get. Somebody say, man, I'm telling you, number one, the pain's unexplainable. But number two, the prayers are unhearable. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. May I say this is a prime example of the sovereign God uh, for the man that opens the lid of hell and lets us look into Luke 16 and then when it's over, Brother Michael, he seals her back up because he's a sovereign God that can do whatever he wants to do whenever he pleases to do that. Amen. And may I tell you tonight, uh, uh, friend, the prayers uh, in hell, they're unhearable. Everybody get real quiet tonight. Listen, listen, you hear them? You hear them? Y'all hear anything? I don't, Brother Seth. You know why? Because the prayers in hell are unhearable. May I tell you tonight, Brother Jim, there's some still down there, and they're saying, No! No! I wish that I on the boat. No, would you please come? No, I wish to God that you could come and get me. 
That rich man tonight, if you could hear him, he said, Father Abraham, oh Jesus, would you please, in agony, while the worm's gnawing on him, he's crying for help. He's saying, you're scaring me. I pray to God it's scaring you. Right, right. You said, I'm uncomfortable. Hell preaching ought to make you uncomfortable. Amen. Amen. Like me or not, you can't deny the fact uh, that when God sealed the lid on hell after Luke 16, a uh, uh, friend that me and you ain't heard from the rich man since. Right, right. We'll hear from him again at that great white throne judgment. When, you have to, when me and you at the judgment seat of Christ with the saved, and we look over to the goat side over at the great white throne judgment, and that rich man looks over at Lazarus who might be standing in front of Mother Manny, and he says, I wish I'd have listened. I wish I'd have listened. I mean, tonight one of you's going to look at me and say, I wish, oh, to God, that I'd have listened to you that night. I wish I'd have listened to that crazy Arkansas mountain. I'm talking about slobber slinging preacher. He might have been crazy, but he was right, Brother Seth. He was right. They sang that song, There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I mean, man, they sang that back home and I couldn't help but think in my heart, oh, that's exactly right. Amen. Oh, friend, there's a heaven to gain tonight. Oh, but if you're going to gain it, you're going to gain it by getting out of hell. Amen. And accepting Jesus in your heart. If I was preaching for meetings tonight, Brother Jim, I wouldn't preach something like this. Did you get that, Brother Manny? Listen, Brother Manny, if he's going to have me in to preach, he's going to have me in for who I am. If people's going to preach Brother Seth Mixon, they're going to preach him for who he is and what he stands for and what he's unapologetic about. I didn't come this way for you to book me, sir, and you to have me in your church. I come to be the man of God uh, that stands in the gap uh, between heaven and hell. And I said, hey, go that way. Go that way. Authorized, without error, Amen. full of truth and wisdom. Hey, and the truth will set you free. I'm talking about tonight, friend, uh, when the fire, wrath, and judgment of God sweeps this great nation. I mean, the grass will wither and the flower will fade. Uh, uh, but I tell you what will not fade uh, is a King James Bible uh, that tells you uh, how to get out uh, of hell uh, forever and ever. You may be a preacher's son. You may be a preacher's daughter. Let me tell you something, boys. It's about to be good for your daddy to preach, but it'd be a shame uh, for him to labor in the doctrine and the gospel of the Lord and you bust hell wide open. Brother Manny, it'd be a shame uh, for you to labor all the years. It'd be a, it'd be a shame for your bride uh, to labor in the word uh, and your daughters and junior bust hell. Oh, may I say tonight, I'd rather live an eternity with you than in a lifetime without you than a lifetime with you and an eternity without you. I told my wife, I said, honey, I said, you better get saved. I'll let her to the Lord after we got married. <coughs> I said, I'd rather live in heaven with you and not have you here on earth with me as I would have you on earth with me and not have you in heaven. y'all get that? Amen. Is that sitting in your heart, girls? You get that? Amen. I know you got your skirts on. I know you got your makeup on. I know you can strum the guitar and sing the hymns. But I'm going to tell you what's in your heart tonight. Are you saved? They ain't nothing like good hell preaching for the self to stir the heart and make you examine the soul. I mean, tonight, I, it'd be great if the angel Gabriel would come down and say, Brother Drew, I just want to let you know oh, that I looked inside the Lamb's Book of Life and I saw your name. You're there. It's all good. You'll be in, the, you'll be in glory. I'm going to shake his hand and say, Gabriel, what an honor. I mean, for you to come, but you wasted a trip, sir, because I looked in John 1, chapter 1, John. 
God. Chapter 5 and verse 13. Uh, that said, I write these things unto you that you may know. Uh, I'm going to say, Gabriel, I done knew that tonight because I got the book. You say, my name's on the church roll. You say, <coughs> Brother Drew, I'm a fundamentalist. You can fundamentalist yourself right off the bluff of hell, ma'am. You can fundamentalist yourself right off the bluff of hell. And I mean, friend, be gone, Brother Jim, forever and ever. You say, I support missions out of my pocket. Oh, for a good job. Oh, do you want a pat on the back? Oh, friend, you might still, if you're not saved, die and go to hell. Because the prayers are unhearable. You say, well, I understand. You know what I'm sick and tired of? There's absolutely no way that's what time it is. No way. Is it eight, almost 8.45 for real? Am I all right, Brother Michael? I'm talking about I'm so sick and tired of football coaches and mamas letting coaches grab their children their fa- and scream in their face and holler and basketball coaches snap clipboards over their knee and screaming in the face of their kids and they're up there saying, get him, bro, get him, coach. That's right, whatever. Oh, but a man of God breaks the bread of life and preaches to your child and hollers in it and you want to get offended and leave. Oh, may I say, friend, football team or not, he'll die and go to hell without Jesus. He can call out to the football coach, but the football coach ain't going to hear him. He can call out to me. I'm not going to hear him. He's coming today. They can call out to God, and God's not going to hear him. I don't know what's in heaven all there. I got what I believe's there, what the Scriptures tells me there. But I know a few things that ain't there. The cries of hell ain't there. Amen. You've got your chance now to do business with God. And you're going to sit there and skate by and hope and pray that you're going to make it. And hope and pray that on your deathbed you'll be able to cry cry out and have a deathbed conversion. I believe in them. But I tell you also, look up in here, they're foolish. Brother Jim, it'd be foolish tonight for somebody to wait till they're on their deathbed to try to get saved. Now, if that person's on their deathbed, and that's the first time the gospel's presented, and they get saved, glory to God. I'm saying it's foolish for you tonight to wait till you get to that point. To cry out to the Lord. Let me tell you number three about a literal hell is this. Look up in here. Number one, the pains are unexplained. Number two, what was number two? Unhearable. Number three, the people are unhelpable. I can't get to you there. Is what Lazarus said. Lazarus said, as bad as I'd love to come get you out of there and bring you where I am, Father Abraham said, there's a great gulf fixed between you and him. And he can't help you now. You remember when Lazarus sat at your gate full of sores? And you passed by day in, Brother Matty and day out, and he never let, let me tell you something, friend, a fine example where having riches will get you. Lazarus is broke as a joke. Somebody get me. Can I get a witness? Boy, I can, I can, get, I can get down with being broke. Say amen. You say, what, what is it like being broke? I'm, I'm like, I don't, I, I mean, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to not be broke. Say amen. I mean, I mean, friend, I wouldn't know what to do if I wasn't broke. Praise the Lord. I mean, God's supply. But I, I look up in here, friend. I'd rather eat crumbs and get licked on by mutt dogs, Brother Manny. And when I die, the angels of the Lord come carry me home as I would be clothed in purple and in fine linen and fair sumptuously and friend bust hell wide open tonight. Because there's going to come a day hey, when the prayers 
are unhelpable on the people's unhelpable. Right. I will not be able to help you there. How many men of God we got in the build tonight, preachers? Raise your hand tonight, preachers. We got Brother Jim, I know Brother Manny. Preachers, we got men of God right there, Brother Seth. Preacher right there. You look around at these men of God right here, preacher. You know let me tell you what this is. These men would love nothing more than to stand in an altar and take a King James Bible and lead you to the Lord. Amen. Right, men? Is that right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. I mean, they love nothing more than to watch you pass from death to life. Hey, I've never met a man. The first time, Brother Jim, was the first man I met ever come to me and said, I won that man of the Lord this day of this month of this year. I'm like, dear God, I, I'm 25, doing good to remember the day. I, I mean, the exact day. He can remember leading. Past. I think tonight, friend, he'd love to check another down. Amen. Uh, let them help you while they can because there's coming a great and a terrible day. Uh, the song says, oh, friend, when the Lord said, uh, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you. Get it right tonight while you still can. Number four. Number four. The pit is unescapable. The pit is unescapable. My soul. Look what the Bible says. He said, in verse 27, he said, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. You know what that is tonight, church? That's a realization that he realized he's never getting out. He ain't never getting out. He's getting out one time. Are y'all with me? For the man, he'll get out once. Brother Michael, but it's going to be to stand before the Lord and then it's going to be to be cast into hell, back into hell that's going to death, and hell's going to be cast into the lake of fire. May I say I wish it got better, oh, but matter of fact, it gets worse. I mean, hell, friend, don't hold a candle light to the lake of fire. I mean, a literal hell, a literal darkness where you can't put your hand in front of your face and see it, dear neighbor, where there's forever falling. I'm talking about a detrimental place. Pit's unescapable. The people's unhelpable. He said this. He said, between all that, there's a great gulf fix. He said, Would you please, in verse number 28, he said, I got five brethren. It's amazing. Let me tell you what Christians need that the rich man had in hell a burden for the lost. It's funny how soon as he died, and I'm talking about the first little flame of hell touched that pinky toe, buddy, he got to thinking about them lost family right. members. Right. He thought, oh my, go tell my brothers. Please go tell my brothers. You know what he said? You know what he said? He said this. He said, your brothers, this is in the originals right here, Brother Jim, right here. He said, your brothers, they got the preachers. They got Moses and the prophets. If they're going to get saved by the man, they're going to get saved by hearing the preaching of the gospel. Let me tell you tonight, friend, do not look for it to be wrote in the sky. But you can be, I can promise you this, that you can expect it to come from the mouth of the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel. You say, well, I don't know when I'll be ready to be saved. You'll know. Tonight, some of you already know. I'm telling you, I feel the devil fighting conviction. I'm talking about thick in here, buddy. Amen. You say, well, you, ain't, you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, be, be me. Be put in my place. Get the, get the discernment the Lord's given me right now. You'd understand. Amen. I mean, dear neighbor, it's hard to explain, but you men of God know what I'm saying. Well, I think when people get under conviction, they do funny things. Guess what? You know they say that men don't go crazy in prison until you lock them up in solitary confinement. I mean, they go crazy, but I mean, that solitary confinement, buddy, is a different game. 
They lock them up in them little bitty rooms, no windows, no outside activity, nobody to talk to, nobody that hears them, nobody that, I mean, man, just visits them very regular, very seldom. But man, they begin to feel alone. Like they're all, you know what's funny about Mark chapter 9, verse 44, I believe it is, the Bible says in their worm. You know what that there is? That's T-H-I-R, T-H-E-I-R. You know what that is? That's a possess. that's theirs. If I give you something, I say, hey, that's there, that's yours. You get in hell, they hand you a, they hand you a, a worm, that's yours. That gnaws on you. The re- I believe that. You say, I don't. Well, that's all right. Amen. You preach it how you want to. I believe it. Their worm. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I, I'll get out. You might. You might get out. Amen. You might get out once, hallelujah, but you ain't getting out no more other than that. You say, well, what about? I, I, I appreciate these boys sitting up here with me. I've been asking them, I said, who's stronger? He said, him. I said, who's faster? He said, him. Because he knows that's older brother, and older brother might whoop him when they get back home. Amen. He said, you're fixing to prove yourself, praise God. Amen. But you know what? You know why I preach like this? Because these boys need to hear. You know why Brother Seth preaches like that? Because he's got family that needs to hear it. See, here's the deal. It doesn't matter if you like me tonight. Because you might not. But guess what? That don't bother me. 